Uh, first things first, uh, I understand you were able to talk to the vice president after the you know, contentious hearing two weeks ago. I wonder if you could tell us more about what she said and did you have any indications that she was uh, not going to show up for today's hearing? Um, after the first budget deliberation, when it was suspended, I immediately uh, went after the vice president. She was actually exiting the, the building, and while she was on her way out, I, I approached her and asked her if there's a possibility that we can meet up. Uh, if not, because I know she's going to be busy, I'm going to be busy for the budget hearing, and uh, if possible that my chief of staff and her staff uh, can possibly find uh, time so that they can sit down and so we can also be brief about the you know the the programs and uh, essentially the budget of the that she the, the, the office of the vice president has requested from DBM uh, so that in the time but then by the time that it goes uh, to plenary uh, as a as a sponsor and as the one who would defend the budget I would be able to know exactly what are the possible answers for possible questions. So uh, she was polite about it when I asked her, uh, but it was a brief uh, exchanges. Uh, I just merely asked for possible uh, schedule, hmm. and then she responded that she will, and uh, she, they will be, uh, well, her office will be coordinating with us, but up to this point, I haven't heard from the office of the vice president. Mm, so there's no follow-up after that. Did no, you... but I'm planning. But I'm planning to write the office, uh, so, you know, to formally request for a possible meetup, uh, so that we can sit down and then discuss okay. about uh, the proposal, uh, you know, the budget, uh, which is under the national expenditure program, as submitted to the House of Representatives. Congressman Zia, um, after that first budget deliberation. You said that it's going to be difficult to defend the OVP's budget um, because of the way that the question and answer portion happened, right? We all know what happened there. Um, now that the second hearing, so this is already the deferral, right? And it had been deferred, right. right? But this deferral, right, she didn't show up. Would that make it even harder or a little bit easier, perhaps? What are your thoughts on that? It makes it, it makes it even harder and difficult for me to sponsor uh, the budget simply because of her non-attendance. Uh, I, I was actually I'm still optimistic that she would appear in the second uh, in the continuation of the budget pre-budget briefing, which is which was today earlier this morning. But unfortunately, some of the questions that uh, well, I, I think those questions were valid in the first place because they're mostly about the proposed 2025 uh, programs that indicated that were indicated in the proposal of, uh, of the office of the vice, vice president so it would have been a lot easier if from the agency itself in this case the office of the vice president would have supplied the necessary inputs and answers that i needed for me to be able to you know carry this through uh, once it reaches the, the plenary but you know, uh, when it happened, it was there was no show, and so yeah, it made a lot difficult for me to because you cannot sponsor something which you do, which you basically do not know. Do so, you get the sense, Paul? Compared, compared to other agencies, uh, where uh, the sponsor actually, apart from the pre-brief briefing deliberation, uh, as what you have just seen, no, during the course of this. Uh, budget processes, uh, the sponsor all normally requests mm -hmm. for a separate pre pre briefing uh, between the sponsor and the agency. Uh, there are a lot of uh, agencies that I handle, not only the Office of the Vice President, but there are also a lot, uh, not, not really a lot, but a sizable number of agencies which I either co-sponsor or as main sponsor. Mm -hmm. And like, for example, in the case of Pomelec, I went to their office and uh, we were you know, we were given the time by the Pomelec to be briefed, not separately from the, from the committee, but this briefing with Pomelec was entirely for the sponsors. I happened to be a co-sponsor of that. So I was ho also hoping the same arrangement with the Congressman Zia, Vice quick follow-up. Um, do you have any idea where your colleagues lean uh, when it comes to the OVP budget? Uh, you know, there was talk of 
making it zero. That's also possible. There's talk of stripping it of the frills, meaning just leaving for MOE or M O O E. Um, it, it, do you get a sense of where this is going, or do we have to wait until the next one, the next hearing? Well, well, let me just say that most of them came out of out of frustration, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, initially, what you know, initially what they what they uh, tried to propose, tried to propose during yesterday's earlier budget is to slash um, substantial amount of the proposed budget uh, and uh, well I for one would not agree that we should uh, zero the budget no that that is for me it's uh, that's that, that's too much because we are not talking of a budget intended for a specific uh, public official but we also have to realize that uh, the office in itself requires a certain amount of uh, budget for it to be for it to operate. Mm -hmm. So we're talking of the second highest position in the land. We're talking about the office of the vice president where you uh, you have their uh, regular uh, employees and of course uh, office equipments that you need to maintain, mm. uh, office that you also need to maintain, bills that you also need to maintain. I mean, pay regularly every month. So I don't agree with the, you know, substantially reducing mm -hmm. the, of the uh, budget of the vice president to a very minimum like for example to an extent of maybe probably probably according to some uh, probably proposing for a zero budget that I do not agree mm. uh, because that would and that would not only a uh, that would that would not only give the person occupying the office mm -hmm. uh, immobility, but it would render us, you know, disrespectful to the office itself, oh. which is the office of the vice president. So we, we also have to look at, you know, uh, respecting the office, not necessarily the person occupying the office, because whatever is the this, whatever is the result of this uh, budget hearing, that would also create the precedents. And I don't want mm -hmm. that the office mm -hmm. of the vice president in the coming years be subjected to zero budget mm -hmm. or a lesser budget just simply because mm -hmm. we happen to uh, have different opinions with the one occupying currently mm. the office. Congressman, there was some uh, off, uh, off cam banter uh, about parliament parliamentary courtesy. How do you grant courtesy to someone who is not there? Uh, is, is the no-show of the vice president a sign of surrender uh, to the House? And what do you think would be the reasonable uh, amount to pass uh, in terms of the budgeting, because you're talking about minimums, but what would be reasonable? And also, you know, this kind of reminds me of Vice President Lenny Robredo under the, the Duterte administration. Um, how do you defend uh, this budget with so much criticism, not just with the confidential intelligence funds, but also with the spending over at the Department of Education? Well, you, the, 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 you know, the non-attendance of the Vice President could be interpreted in many ways. Uh, you know, the thing is, many of us have, you know, many of us have our own in different uh, opinion regarding that. Some, some interpreted that as a way to insult uh, the, the, the House of Representatives. Some uh, just simply took it as a, um, well, as, as a move to send a, a strong message to the House of Representatives that... Uh, you know, it could be that the vice president no longer is interested. Well, in fact, she intimated that earlier in the previous meeting that she forgo the opportunity mm -hmm. to defend her budget, meaning to say she leave it all, leave it all up to the decision of the house. Some also said that there's nothing, there's no other way to look at it than than simply boycotting the process. But let let us remember that the, this budget process is not just simply put there in order for the members of the House of Representatives who ask questions uh, based on the proposed budget of each of the different agencies. This is a constitutional requirement uh, granted by the Constitution in order that we can uh, in, we can maintain the check and balances mm. among the three branches of the government. The legislature having the power of the purse, meaning they can 
They can uh, scrutinize the budget because they are elected directly by the people and therefore they are the representative of the people and we're talking about the money of the people, the right. taxpayers' money. So it is a delegated power mandate mm. uh, to the legislature by the constitution. So it's a constitutional requirement. Now, on the other hand, as you were asking me, how is go how do we carry out uh, after the incident happened today? Uh, and, and like and comparing it to the budget of the vice, former vice president Lenny Robredo, I think the most uh, reasonable um, way to move forward in this case, because the confidential funds uh, covers the 2002 and 2003 uh, fund, no, a uh, mm -hmm. budget for the for the vice president, which according to the COA report. The notice of this allowance covers uh, the 125 million which was spent for about 11 days. But this is not entirely the 125 million. We're talking about 58 percent of that. So 73, 73 million out of the 120, 125 million were, according to COA, were utilized not comply, not compliant with the joint memorandum circular, meaning to say there are certain yeah. criteria that we can actually mm -hmm. use. Uh, and so, um, the, 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 for me, you know, after mm -hmm. hearing all those uh, concerns, and uh, of course, we also need to base the recommendation from what the COA has has uh, has given us. I think the reasonable is for the office of the vice president to um, to operate according to its mandate, you no, know? uh, because the, some of the programs which allegedly have duplication and have mm -hmm. redundancy with the other programs and other agencies right. can be transferred uh, to these agencies whose programs are similar with that of the proposed programs mm. under the office yeah. of the vice president. Right. So, yes, I think that is fair and that is reasonable. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, just very quickly, Congressman Ajong, we're running out of time, but just very quickly, off of today's breaking news, uh, House Majority Leader Manix Dalipe has said that she may be liable for a graft if she is unable to explain. This is the first time we're hearing it from a House ranking member. In the past, the idea was ever only brought up by the Makabayan Block. How serious do you think this is? Well, any misuse of the funds could ultimately lead to issue of graft and corruption, but... Uh, on this particular note, I think I still have to really look into the the reports no, of COA. Uh, I have heard these reports. I've seen the utilization report. I also have I've seen also the notes of allow these allowances. But I also need to get more onto the evidences on how COA could be able to supply su supply these evidences and prove that indeed the vice president has committed uh, misconduct in terms of the use of the public funds.